Good day everyone. For this report, we will discuss about the LEC and VB-VGF methods of growing gallium arsenide wafers. Our problem statement is as follows. Based on the crystal properties of gallium arsenide wafers grown, identify which method between LEC and VB-VGF is better suited for device manufacturing. Before an adequate conclusion to this problem can be reached, we must first learn about several things. Namely, gallium arsenide crystals, the liquid encapsulated Shokoralski technique, and the vertical Bridgman and vertical gradient freezing methods. Let us proceed. Good afternoon. I'm going to present about the gallium arsenide or gas. So for gallium arsenide, so this is a compound of the elements gallium and arsenic. Gallium arsenide is a Group 3 5 direct band gap semiconductor with a zinc band crystal structure. And the gallium arsenide is used in the manufacture of devices such as microwave frequency integrated circuits, monolithic microwave integrated circuits, infrared light emitting diodes, laser diodes, solar cells, and optical windows. Gas is often used as a substrate material for the epitaxial growth of other Group 3 5 semiconductors, including indium gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide, and others. For preparation and chemistry, so in this compound, gallium methyl plus 3 oxidation state, gallium arsenide single crystals can be prepared by three industrial processes. The vertical gradient freeze or VGA process, most gas wafers are produced using this process. Crystal growth using a horizontal zone surface in the Beachman stock parture technique in which gallium and arsenic vapors react and free molecules deposit on a seed crystal at the cooler end of the surface. Liquid encapsulated, so Kratzky or LEC growth is used for producing high purity single crystals that can exhibit semi-insulating characteristics. Alternative methods for producing films of gas include DPA reaction of gaseous gallium metal and arsenic trichloride, MOCVD reaction of trimethyl gallium and arsenic molecular beam epitaxy of gallium and arsenic. The oxidation of gas occurs in air, degrading performance of the semiconductor. The surface can be passivated by depositing a cubic gallium sulfide layer using a third butyl gallium sulfide compound. For gallium arsenide advantages, it has a very high electron mobility. Gas cells are let relatively insensitive to heat compared to silicon cells. Hence, it offers high thermal stability. It has lower noise. It operates over wide temperature range. And also due to its high efficiency and resistance to radiation, gas is widely used for space applications. For disadvantages, there is no natural oxide as in silicon. It doesn't grow native oxide, which is equivalent to silicon dioxide. The single crystal gas substrate has higher production cost. Gas wafers are more brittle compared to silicon wafers. The ingots also has smaller sizes. Gas is made of mixture of two metals, gallium and arsenic. Gallium is rarer than gold and it's, and it's byproduct of other metals such as aluminum and zinc. Arsenic is not rare but it is poisonous. Other applications for gas is uh, solar cells and detectors. So gallium arsenide is an important semiconductor material for high cost, high efficiency solar cells and is used for single crystalline thin film solar cells and for multi-junction solar cells. It's also applied for spin charge converters. So gas may have applications in spintronics that it can be used instead of platinum in spin charge converters and maybe more tunable. Today, I will discuss with you the VB and VGF method. For the outline, first, I will give you a short background about the method and how it works. Then, the advantages and disadvantages for VB and VGF method. On the next slide, we will discuss with you the VB method. What is VB method? 
BB, or known as Vertical Bridgeman, was published already in the 1960s and it has been rediscovered for the preparation of low discoloration 3 5 materials in the late of 1980s. This methodology was named after Harvard physicist Percy Williams Bridgeman. This methodology is a popular way of producing certain semiconductor crystals such as a gallium arsenide. On the right side, here is the diagram showing the principal directional solidification by translating a melt from the hot zone to the cool zone. So, let's discuss the principle. The Bridgman furnace works with three temperature zones. The upper zone, with temperature above the melting point of silicon. The lower zone, with a temperature below melting point and a adiabatic zone as a buffer between the two. The policy material in the crucible needs to be melt completely in the hot zone and be brought into contact with the seed at the bottom of the crucible. Part of the seed will be remelted. This provides a fresh interface for the crystal growth. The crucible is then translated slowly into the spooler section of the furnace. The temp at the bottom of the crucible falls below the solidification temp and crystal growth. After the whole crucible is translated through cold zone, the entire milk converts to a solid single crystalline ingot. Then, on the next slide, is VGF. Then what is VGF? VGF is a technique used in growing semiconductors composed of multiple elements that include gallium, arsenic, indium, and phosphorus. It was used for producing low dislocation density gas crystals. The principal and application areas for BP and BGF are basically similar. The difference between the two methods is BGF method cancels the crystal descending carriage mechanism and the rotating mechanism and the computer precisely controls the thermal field for low cooling. Then on the next slide, we will discuss with you the comparison of BG and BGF. This diagram is a comparison for uh, BG and BGF. PM is the melting point and the horizontal dashed lines show the progress of solid liquid interface. After discussing the BV and BGF um, working principles, I will discuss with you the advantages and the disadvantages or problems encountered of these two methodology. Here are the list of some advantages of BB and BGF method. Production of almost cylindrically shaped crystals up to 6 inches. Low thermal gradients resulting to low residual strains and low dislocation. Unixial heat and mass flow. Optional control of stoichiometry, post growth heat element in the growth equipment, and lastly, lower investment cost. These methods also are prepared in the industrial production of gas with a higher yield round wafers. Next are the disadvantages or problems of these two methodology. First, no visual control of growth. Second, difficulty of carbon doping and carbon control. Third, is the increasing of crystal length. And lastly, the purity. Good afternoon. I'll be presenting here the liquid encapsulated Shokralski or what we call LEC technique. The liquid encapsulated Shokralski or LEC crystal growth processes are widely used or employed to produce semiconductor crystals, especially those in the group of three to four compounds and notably the gallium arsenide and the indium phosphide. This liquid encapsulation technique was developed to address the problem with vapor pressure of phosphorus which is higher than the gallium phosphide and indium phosphide making the melt growth nearly impossible with Shoralski growth. This system involved pulling a single crystal ball slowly from a crucible of molten semiconductor material which is maintained by heating the outer surface of the crucible by placing it on a pedestal positioned inside either a resistance or RF heater. 
the surface tension act against the force of gravity to form a meniscus connecting the surface of the melt or to the edge of the growing crystal. The temperature gradient needed to sustain the solidification and nearly perfect crystal is achieved by pulling the solid into a cooler ambient above the crucible. The LEC technique is the most widely used growth method for the compound semiconductors such as gallium arsenide, gallium phosphide, indium phosphide, as well as the lead selenide and lead uh, telluride. Encapsulating liquid. This technique involves covering the melt with a suitable liquid and filling the remaining volume of the system with an inert gas above the vapor pressure of the volatile element. The volatile element is then trapped below the liquid. The term liquid encapsulation arises from the idea that the ideal liquid would tend to encapsulate both the metal and the growing crystal, the loss of the volatile element and from the reaction with the crucible. To prevent the decomposition of the melt during crystal growth due to the high pressure of arsenic, the melt is encapsulated by a by layer of boron trioxide. The ideal encapsulating liquid should have the following properties. It should be less dense than the melt. It should not react with the melt. It should wet but not react with both crucible and the growing crystal. It should be immiscible with the melt. It should be transparent. It should melt well below and up a low vapor pressure at the melting point of gallium arsenide. It should be available in high purity grade. The encapsulant that has been most widely used in the liquid encapsulation growth of gallium arsenide is the boric oxide. The crystal cooler used for all liquid encapsulated growth of gallium arsenide has been the NRC Equipment Corporation model 2H05 Chokralski furnace as shown in this figure. The glass rod passing through the viewing port on the right is used to manipulate the boric oxide container as in figure 2. The heater assembly used is that designed for NRC smaller model 2H04 furnace. The only modification necessary for growing. The crystal growth. The crucible quartz or alumina is degreased, cleaned with aqua regia, rinsed with methanol and a 10% KCM solution and positioned in the graphite uh, crucible holder. Approximately 100 grams of polycrystalline gallium arsenide are degreased, etched with agua regia, rinsed with methanol and placed in the crucible. The graphite crucible holder is positioned with its top about 89 inches below the top of the heater. The platinum crucible containing the big out boric oxide is removed from the quartz vacuum chamber and positioned in the quartz holder, as in figure 2. Heating started manually at a power level of about 3 kW, the boric oxide starts to flow in 30 to 45 minutes. The gallium arsenide charge is about uh, 700 degrees centigrade by this time. And after the boric oxide has finished flowing, the quartz holder is moved out all the way. The gallium arsenide is heated to its melting temperature. After the melt stabilizes at the growth temperature, very little uh, arsenic is lost. Just prior to seeding, the graphite crucible holder is raised to the top of its level with the top of the heater. During the growth, the seed is rotated at 23 RPM and crucible is rotated at 7 RPM in the same direction and the seed is pulled out at 0.007 inches per minute. The surface of the melt is always very clean during growth. Control of the shape of crystal is accomplished by varying either crucible temperature or the rate of temperature change. Here are some advantages of LEC. High reliability and mature technology. Easy growth for longer or large diameters, single crystal with circular cross section. It is controllable uh, crystal carbon content. It has good semi-insulating uh, properties of the crystal. Pre-growth uh, without uh, container contact and uh, it is uh, used for the gathering ability of boron oxide to influence background impurities. Conditioning of the melt is defined overheating before dipping. So there are also some uh, disadvantages or 
problem with LC LEC. Stoichiometry control due to uncontrolled gallium and arsenic losses through the borom oxide encapsulant. There is also a selective basa evaporation of the crystal surface emerging from the encapsulant resulting to gallium droplets or trails uh, with reduced yield. High temperature and nonlinearities in the growing crystal near the solid to liquid phase boundary and the uh, emerging region resulting in a rather high and inhomogeneous distributed dislocation density in the range. It is also unsteady and uh, forced convection in the melt and turbulence in the gas phase causing dopant uh, inhomogeneities and fluctuating temperature and stress field in the growing crystal. It also has a high investment and uh, process uh, cost and the necessity of uh, post-multi-step uh, heat treatment in order to improve the residual stress level and homogeneity of the electrical uh, properties. Now that we have learned about gallium arsenide crystals, the LEC and Bridgman growth techniques, and their respective pros and cons, we can now decide which method is better suited for device manufacturing. Here, we have a table comparing the main features of gas crystals grown using either method. The VBVGF method notably lacks control of carbon doping, and its crystal growth also cannot be observed in real time. This makes it difficult to utilize for applications that require high reliability. This approach also has a lower productivity, but is compensated by low costs. On the other hand, the LEC method has poor dislocation density control. This can negatively affect the electrical properties of the grown gas crystals, making it less favored for applications like solar cell manufacturing. Additionally, its investment and operational costs are high, but this comes with high productivity. With this, both methods are suitable for device manufacturing of gas applications but the more appropriate technique can be identified based on the requirements of the device. The Bridgman methods are suitable for low-end and low-cost applications where quantity is prioritized over reliability, while the LEC method is preferred for high-cost and high-reliability applications where quality is prioritized the most. These are our references and thank you for listening to this video and learning with us.